Thank you for joining us. Do we think they'll be fair? I doubt it. I doubt it, right? I mean, there's no way. After what we saw with ABC in particular. Would you support or oppose a preemptive strike by Israel on Iran? You have two minutes. So, Margaret, I want to answer the question. First of all, thanks, Governor. Thanks to CBS for hosting the debate. And thanks, most importantly, to the American people who are watching this evening and caring enough about this country to pay attention to this vice presidential debate. I want to answer the question, but I want to actually give an introduction to myself a little bit because I recognize a lot of Americans don't know who either one of us are. Uh, I was raised in a working Fair class point. family. My mother required food assistance for periods of her life. My grandmother required social security help to that raise me. That feels like taking a page out of Kamala's playbook there. With addiction for a big chunk of my early life. I went to college on the GI Bill after I enlisted in the Marine Corps and served in Iraq. And so I stand here asking to be your vice president with extraordinary gratitude for this country, for the American dream that made it possible for me to live my dreams. And most importantly, I know that a lot of you are worried about the chaos in the world and the feeling that the American dream is unattainable. I want to try to convince you tonight over the next 90 minutes that if we get better leadership in the White House, if we get Donald Trump back in the White House, the American dream is going to be attainable once again. Now, to answer this particular question, there we, go. we have to remember that as much as Governor Waltz just accused Donald Trump of being an agent of chaos, Donald Trump actually delivered stability in the world, and he did it by establishing effective deterrence. People were afraid of stepping out of line. Iran, which launched this attack, has received over $100 billion in unfrozen assets thanks to the Kamala Harris administration. What do they use that money for? They use it to buy weapons that they're now launching against our allies, and God forbid, potentially, launching against the United States as well. Donald Trump recognized that for people to, to fear the United States, you needed peace through strength. They needed yeah. to recognize that if they got out of line, the United States global leadership would put stability and peace back in the world. Now, you asked about a preemptive strike, Margaret, and I want to answer the question. Look, it is up to Israel what they think they need to do to keep their country safe, and we should support our allies wherever they are when they're fighting the bad guys. I think that's the right approach to take with the Israel question. We are seeing us becoming an energy superpower for the future, not just the current, and that's what absolutely makes sense. And then we start thinking about how do we mitigate these disasters? Um, I the Inflation Reduction Act was 2021, wasn't it? It was right uh, after Joe Biden took yeah. office. It was either 2021 mm -hmm. or 2022. I still have yet to get a solid answer from anyone, any political analyst, any staffer on Capitol Hill of all these hundreds of thousands of jobs that have been created in clean energy. Who's taking them? You can create all the jobs you want, but they're not filling those jobs. It's literally just a political talking point. I've been asking this question for three years. So something Governor Walsh said I think is important to touch upon because when we talk about clean energy, I think that's a slogan that often the Democrats will use here. And I'm talking, of course, about the Democratic leadership. And the real issue is that if you're spending hundreds of millions or even billions of dollars of American taxpayer money on solar panels that are made in China, number one, you're going to make the economy dirtier. We should be making more of those solar panels here in the United <laughs> States of America. Some of them are, Tim, but a lot of them are being made overseas in China, especially True. the components that go into those solar panels. Rare so element if you mining, really people. want to make the environment cleaner, you've got to invest in more energy production. We Facts. haven't built a nuclear facility, I think, one in the past 40 years. Senator. Natural gas, we've got to invest more in it. Kamala Harris has done the opposite. That's raised energy prices and also meant that we're doing Senator, worse by the climate. Senator, your time is up. Nuclear. Governor, like well, look, we're, we're producing more natural gas than we ever have. There's no moratorium on that. We're producing more oil. But the folks know, and my, like I said again, these are not liberal folks. These are not folks that are Green New Deal folks. These are farmers that have been drought one year, massive flooding the next year. They understand that it makes sense. Look, our number one export cannot be topsoil from erosion from these massive storms. We saw it in Minnesota this summer. And thinking about how do we respond to that, we're thinking ahead on this. And what Kamala Harris has been able to do in Minnesota, we're starting to weatherproof some of these things. The infrastructure law that was passed allows us to think about mitigation in the future. How do we make sure that we're protecting by burying our power lines? How do we make sure that we're protecting lake fronts and things that we're seeing more and more of? But to call it a hoax and to take the oil company executive <laughs> to mar lago say, give me money for my campaign and I'll let you do whatever you want. We can be smarter about that, and an all above energy policy is exactly what she's doing, creating those jobs right here. Would you deport parents who have entered the U.S. illegally 
and yep. separate them from any of their yep. children who were born on U.S. Yep. I wonder if he'll take a page from Vivek so first here, of all, ending Margaret, birth rate citizenship. we talk citizenship. about deportations, we have to stop the bleeding. We have a historic immigration crisis because Kamala Harris started and said that she wanted to undo all of Donald Trump's border policies. 94 executive orders suspending deportations, decriminalizing illegal aliens, uh, r massively increasing the asylum fraud that exists in our system. That has opened the floodgates. And what it's meant is that a lot of fentanyl is coming into our country. True. I have a mother who struggled with opioid addiction and has gotten clean. I don't want people who are struggling ad with addiction to be deprived of their second chance because Kamala Harris led in fentanyl into our communities at record levels. So you've got to stop the bleeding. You've got to re-implement Donald Trump's border policies, build the wall, re-implement deportations, and that gets me to your point, Margaret, about what do we actually do? So we've got 20, 25 million illegal aliens who are here in the country. What do we do with them? I think the first thing that we do is we start with the criminal migrants. About a million of those people have committed some form of crime in addition to crossing the border illegally. I think you cook. start with deportations on those folks. And then I think you make it harder for illegal aliens to undercut the wages of American workers. A lot of people will go home if they can't work for less than minimum wage in our own country. And by the way, that'll be really good for our workers who just want to earn a fair wage for doing a good day's work. The real family separation policy in this country is unfortunately Kamala Harris's wide open southern border. And I'd ask my fellow Americans to remember when she came into office, she said she was going to do this. Real leadership would be saying, you know what, I screwed up. We're going to go back to Donald Trump's border policies. I wish that she would do that. It would be good for all of us. Governor. Do you care right. to respond to any of those specific allegations, <laughs> including that the vice president is, quote, letting in fentanyl and using kids <laughs> as drug mules, among other things? Yeah, that is well, happening. The drug mule is not true. But I will say about this, about the fentanyl, because this is a crisis of this, the opioid crisis. And the good news on this is, is the last 12 months saw the largest decrease in opioid deaths in our nation's history. 30% decrease in Ohio, but there's still more work to do. But let's go back to this on immigration. Kamala Harris was the attorney general of the largest state, a border state in California. She's the only person in this race who prosecuted transnational gangs for human trafficking and drug you interventions. But look, we all want to solve this. She's in charge of the border right now, Most dude. of us want to solve this. And that is the United States Congress. That's the Border Patrol agents. That's the Chamber of Commerce. That's most Americans out here. He's gonna That's say why Trump we had the fairest bill. and the toughest bill yeah, on here we go. immigration that this nation's seen. It was crafted by a conservative senator from Oklahoma, James Lankford. I know him. He's super conservative, but he's a man of principle. Yeah, that bro's a liberal. Done. Democrats and Republicans worked on this piece of legislation. The Border Patrol said, this is what we need in here. These are the experts. And the Chamber That's of Commerce and the Wall Street Journal said, pass this thing. Kamala Harris helped get there. 1,500 new border agents. Detection for yes, drugs. 5,000 illegal DOJ immigrants money a to day. speed up. A These, day. Uh, Donald Trump said no. Told them to vote against it because it gives him a campaign issue. Governor Walls, you said you were in Hong Kong during the deadly Tiananmen Square protests in the spring of 19. Are they going to bring up the China? But Minnesota indictment? Public Radio and other media outlets are reporting that you actually didn't travel to Asia <laughs> until August of that year. Can you explain that discrepancy? Your yeah, comments. well, and to the folks out there who didn't get at the top of this, look, I, uh, I grew up in small rural Nebraska, a uh, town of 400, town that you rode your bike with your buddies till the streetlights come on, and I'm proud of that service. I joined the National Guard at 17, worked on family farms, and then I used the GI Bill to become a teacher, passionate about it, a young teacher. Uh, my first year out, I got the opportunity in the summer of 89 uh, to travel to China. 35 years ago, be able to do that. I came back home and then started a program to take young people there. We would take basketball teams, we would take baseball teams, we would take dancers, and we would go back and forth to China. The issue for that was, was to try and learn. Now look, my community knows who I am. They saw where I was at. They Look, oh, I, I will be the first just to tell answer. you, I have poured my heart into my community. I've tried to do the best I can, but I've not been perfect. Not. And I'm a knucklehead at times, but it's always been about that. Those same people elected me to Congress for 12 years. And in Congress, I was one of the most bipartisan people, working on things like farm bills that we got done, working but on But were you there benefits. during the Tiananmen the Square Massacre? were able to elect me to governor She should twice. follow up and say, yeah, so look, it, my Jane commitment has been from the beginning to make sure that I'm there for the people, to make you make sure that say, I get I'm this right. I will say more than anything, 
Many times I, uh, I will talk a lot, I will get caught up in the rhetoric, um, but being there, the impact it made, the difference it made in my life, I learned a lot about China. I hear the critiques of this. I would make the case that Donald Trump should have come on one of those trips with us. I guarantee you he wouldn't he be uh, praising Xi Jinping about COVID, and I guarantee you he wouldn't start a trade war that he ends up losing. So this is about trying to understand but were you the in world. The TNM it's about <laughs> trying to do the best you can for your community, and then it's putting yourself out there and letting your folks understand what it is. Now to the issue of reproductive rights. Governor Walls, after Roe versus Wade was overturned, you signed a bill into law that made Minnesota one of the least restrictive states in Are the nation be when honest? it comes to abortion. Say nine months. Former President Trump said in the last debate that you believe abortion, quote, in the ninth month Say it. is absolutely fine. Yes or no? It's in your is that is Minnesota state law, by the way, as it stands. Which you support. I'll give you two minutes. That's not what the bill says, but look. This, this issue is what's on everyone's mind. Donald Trump put this all into motion. He brags about how great it was that he put the judges in and overturned Roe versus Wade, 52 years of personal autonomy. And then he tells us, oh, we send it to the states. It's a beautiful thing. Amanda Zaworski would disagree with you on it's a beautiful thing. A young bride in Texas waiting for their child at 18 weeks, she has a complication, a tear in the membrane. She needs to go in. The medical care at that point needs to be decided by the doctor. And that would have been an abortion. But in Texas, that would have put them in legal jeopardy. She went home, got sepsis, nearly dies, and now she may have difficulty having children. Senator, do you want to respond to the governor's claim? Will you create a federal pregnancy monitoring agency? No. No, nor cer certainly we won't. And I want to talk about this issue because I know a lot of Americans care about it. And I know a lot of Americans don't agree uh, with everything that I've ever said on this topic. And, you know, I, I, I grew up in a working class family in a neighborhood where I knew a lot of young women who had unplanned pregnancies and decided to terminate those pregnancies because they feel like they didn't have any other options. And, you know, I, 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 one of them is actually very dear to me. And I know she's watching tonight and I love you. And she told me something a couple years ago that she felt like if she hadn't had that abortion, that it would have destroyed her life because she was in an abusive relationship. And I think that what I take from that as a Republican who proudly wants to protect innocent life in this country, who proudly wants to protect the vulnerable, is that my party, we've got to do so much better of a job at earning the American people's trust back on this issue where they frankly just don't trust us. And I think that's one of the things that Donald Trump and I are endeavoring to do. I want us as a Republican Party to be pro-family in the fullest sense of the word. I want us to support fertility treatments. I want us to make it easier for moms to afford to have babies. I want it to make it easier for young families to afford a home so they can afford a place to raise that family. And I think there's so much that we can do on the public policy front just to give women more options. Now, now, of course, Donald Trump has been very clear that on the abortion policy specifically, that we have a big country and it's diverse. And California has a different viewpoint on this than Georgia. Georgia has a different viewpoint from Arizona. And the proper way to handle this, as messy as democracy sometimes is, is to let voters make these decisions, let the individual states make their abortion policy. And I think that's what makes the most sense in a very big, a very diverse, and let's be honest, sometimes a very very, very messy and divided country. Anyway, we're going to come back to the debate here in just a second. I'm wildly impressed with J.D. Vance in general. I wish he would have gone slightly more on offense on that issue. But I, I think this is easily the biggest heart wrenching issue. Every American is struggling with how to approach in the next five weeks. Five weeks from today is Election Day. And particularly as the election is packaged towards young women, there is this idea that the only thing you are supposed to be voting for is abortion. I want you to know it is that radical. There is one side that's being generally pretty moderate about it and level-headed and sensible about the whole thing. And there is another side that is actually allowing born children to die and not receive life-saving medical care, which obviously violates the Hippocratic Oath in justifying reproductive rights or trusting all women. I just, can I show something in the camera really quick? If you guys go to Google, the second link it might not. The, yeah, there focus, you go. Is the Guttmacher Institute. And right here. No, you're not going to. It's uh, autofocus. It's okay. Honey. It's autofocus. Whatever. This paragraph right down here says nine states, including the District of Columbia, do not have restrictions on abortion. If you scroll down, there's a chart of all the states. And guess which state? Right under the no ban or gestational limit is Minnesota. January 6th was not Facebook ads. And, and I think a revisionist history on this. Look, I, I 
don't understand how we got to this point. But the issue was that happened. Donald Trump can do it. And all of us say there's no place for this. It has massive repercussions. This idea that there's censorship to stop people from doing threatening to kill someone, threatening to do something, that's not that's not censorship. Censorship is book banning. We've seen that. We've seen that brought up. Tim, I'm focused on the future. Did Kamala Harris censor Americans from speaking their mind in the wake of the 2020 COVID situation? Yes. That is Mark Zuckerberg has said so. Has she, it's a damning non-answer for you to not talk about censorship. Correct. Obviously, Donald Trump and I think that there were problems in 2020. We've talked about it. I'm happy to talk about it further. But you guys attack us for not believing in democracy. The most sacred right under the United States democracy is the First Amendment. You yourself have said there's no First Amendment right to misinformation. Kamala yep. Harris wants to well, use the power of speech. government and hate big speech. tech to silence people from speaking he their minds. Said it. That is a threat Keep to democracy going. that will long outlive this present political moment. I would like Democrats and Republicans to both reject censorship. Let's persuade one another. Let's argue about ideas and then let's come together after. There's no such thing as hate speech. In a crowded theater. That's that's the test. That's the Supreme Court test. Tim, that's not fire hate in a crowded speech. theater. You guys wanted to kick people off of Facebook for saying that toddlers shouldn't Senator, wear masks. Senator, the governor does that's have the floor. That's not fire in a crowded theater. <laughs> that is criticizing the policies of the government, which is the right of every American. Senator, Correct. The governor does have Absolutely. the floor for one minute to Please. respond Way to, to you. Go, JD. Yeah. Well, I don't run Facebook. What I do know is, is I see a candidate out there who refused, and now again, and this I'm pretty shocked by this, he lost the election. This is not a debate. It's not. It, it, it's not anything. Which is why he left office, dude. Move on. Donald Trump's world. Because look, when Mike Pence made that decision to certify that election, that's why Mike Pence isn't on this stage. What I'm concerned about is where is the firewall with Donald Trump? Where is the firewall if he knows he could do anything, including taking an election? He's not the CEO President's of Facebook, but he That's is the running mate of someone America. who called Will Facebook and said, up? censor this. Will and he needs to answer for that. Office, even if the president doesn't. And I think Kamala Harris would agree. She wouldn't have picked me if she didn't think I would do that. Because, of course, that's what we would do. So, America, I think you've got a really clear choice on this election. Amen, who's dude. Who's going to honor that democracy and who's going to honor Donald Trump? Uh, I think this really was the last opportunity to go on offense for your campaign. Tim Waltz totally failed at that. J.D. Vance totally excelled at it, in my opinion. Tonight. Yeah, I mean, I think J.D. Vance, I mean, the debate style setup is perfect for him. Yeah. Like, he was built for that. If there was a person ne like under Vivek, that would be perfect for that kind of forum. It would probably be him. Oh. Vivek, I think, still would have done better. I know. Well, they're best friends, which is but, fun like, to think about, sense. too. I mean, it like, clearly honestly, rubbed off. Like, yeah. JD should do that more. <laughs> Take the time to fact check these people because we know the mainstream media that's basically just government sponsored propaganda at this point sure as hell isn't going to. And I cannot recommend, if you guys haven't already made prayer a part of your daily routine, downloading the world's largest Christian prayer app, Hallo, H-A-L-L-O-W. They have more than 10,000 original prayers, meditations, history podcasts, lifestyle podcasts, mental health resources, everything you can possibly imagine that has totally transformed my prayer life and that of almost every single one of you as well. Hallow is offering you a three-month free trial to all of the incredible content on their platform. If you go right now to hallow.com slash Isabel, H-A-L-L-O-W.com slash Isabel. And our friends over at Public Square, America's largest leading marketplace for small businesses that are all pro-family, pro-faith, and pro-freedom and pro-actual science, by the way, actually got their start out in the beautiful state of California. They are changing how we spend money in America one day at a time, realizing that where we spend our dollars is where culture is going to thrive. If you are looking for businesses to support that share your values, check them out at publicsquare.com. And if you are a business owner of any kind, make sure you add your small business to Public Square to connect with customers who share your values too. I'm so glad, by the way, that there are companies that are trying to get to the actual truth of matters like this and in standing for women in general, just one of which happens to be my amazing friends over at Garnu. Garnu is the only period product company on the market that insists only women 
can menstruate. Thank you for that, by the way, Garnu, because we need a whole lot more of that. And their pads, their tampons, and their menstrual cup products are all 100% organic and completely non-toxic. I have noticed a huge change in my cycle since switching to Garnu products, and I cannot begin to recommend them enough to you, especially after we just found out that most leading tampon brands have arsenic and lead in them if you're buying them at Target or the grocery store. You can get a discount on your first order to Garnier if you click the link in the description of this video. And please, please, please embrace the same courage that they are in standing up for real womanhood in 2024 and beyond.